Hey everybody, happy Tuesday. We are live. It's happy hour time. And I am uh, got a couple different bottles that I'm going to be working on tonight. Enjoying right now some of this uh, Johnny Walker 18-year-old, uh, which I got a heel of. I'll be polishing that heel off tonight. And going to get into a little bit of the Wee Beasties, Luna. And then um, we'll be talking Lagavulin later on the um, Telex and Malt Show. So I hope everybody's doing well. So we got some folks in the house already. Good stuff. Another week. How's everybody doing? Still living in this COVID world. Hope everybody's staying safe. It's like the one named Nestor's in the house already chatting us up. Hey, I'm here for the session. It's been a long week already. Yeah, I hear that. So just pour our bag 10 and ready to chill. Cilantro, Nestor. Thanks for stopping in. We're going to be hanging out for a little bit. Uh, Matt D is in the house too. Hey, Matt, how are you doing, man? Happy Tuesday. Deanston 12 over here. I've uh, I actually had the other bag 10 ready for my next pour. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Start with the Deanston 12 and head into the peat, man. Sounds good. I got this, uh, yeah, I got a little, I'm going to polish off this Johnny Walker 18. Uh, really pretty much enjoyed this, man. Uh, it's nothing remarkable, but at a good price, solid pour for sure. So good to see you, Matt, man. Thanks for swinging by. Daniel's in the house saying, hey, buddy, how you doing? Hey, I hope all's well with you, man. Another week in the uh, coronavirus laden world. So hope everybody's staying safe, as I said, and uh, hope uh, you and yours are doing well, Daniel. Thanks for stopping by. Jason Coates, working, working at the other desk across the room. <laughs> nice, man. Thanks for swinging by, Jason. Happy Tuesday, man. Hope everything's going good. I'm nothing near a frontliner, but apparently what I do is important to board people stuck at home. It's been crazy here. Yeah, man, I hear you on that, Jason. It's been crazy almost everywhere <laughs> in a lot of ways. Hope everything is going as well as it can be. Daniel's doing some infinity bottle. Been hanging out here a while. Nice. Be interested to hear what kind of infinity bottle you're working on. I've actually never done that. Um, been thinking about it though, there are just some bottles, you know. Um, maybe this is a good thing to talk about, you know. Uh, obviously, the whiskey is the most important thing, but sometimes presentation, you know, some whiskeys present themselves real nice and uh, especially give you a good bottle that you can uh, you can use as a decanter if you're not buying your own. So, be curious if you uh, you got any bottles that you particularly like, Daniel. Uh, one that comes off the top of my mind for me is the um, the Habiki Japanese Harmony. Just really, really nice bottle. It's like it almost looks like a decanter. Solid stuff. Uh, Vanessa's in the house. Vanessa, nice to see you. How are you doing? Hope everything's well with you and yours. Thanks for swinging by for a little uh, Tuesday whiskey. So yeah, as I said, we're gonna. Um, I'm gonna finish off this Johnny Walker 18, and then um, over the weekend, I uh, got my hands on the new Art Bag. This is that uh, Wee Beastie. Five-year-old. Um, this is the newest release to their core range. So as you can see, it's already been open, but I'll sip this and tell you a little bit about what I think about it. I'm curious if anybody else has had the Ardbeg Wee Beastie. Um, I did an uncorking review of it over the weekend, so that'll be posting on Friday if you want to check that out. And uh, yeah, I've got some Buna Hobbin 12. Later, I'll be getting into Lagavulin. Uh, Jason, the whiskey tech, or Telex, the whiskey tech, and I will be chatting around a little bit after nine over on his channel about Lagavulin. So that'll be fun. Daniel said, man, there's just a lot of different stuff. Yeah, that's for sure. You know, I was thinking about uh, another bottle that I really like. Something I got this weekend is Tam Dew. I don't know if you've ever had any Tam Dews, but I got a bottle of the Tam Dew 10 this weekend, man. This is, they got a really nice looking bottle too. That's freaking awesome. This could be a fun one to do as a decanter. Super thick glass. Nice presentation. Could be fun. But yeah, I'd be interested. I've like I said, I've never I've yet to do a uh a uh infinity bottle or anything like that. I'm actually pretty ignorant about how it all works. So I'd love to hear I'd love to hear uh what you what you all put in it. I know some folks, uh my buddy Fuquig, he does he's got a couple. He does like uh 
he's got like a Isla and then there's like a Highland one. He's kind of just mixing and matching a bunch of that stuff in there from the different regions of Scotland, which sounds pretty cool. Could be a lot of fun. I have a decanter from the 1940s actually says Daniel. It's some kind of special crystal. A friend and the antiques owner gave it to me a birthday gift a few years ago. Oh, that's nice, man. That sounds like the perfect thing to use is your uh, decanter. Better than using an old bottle. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Daniel said the wee beastie, how is it? Yeah, I'm going to get into that in a few minutes. Um, I got some thoughts on it already. I was, like I said, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to have a full review of it post on Friday. I do all my reviews post on Friday. So you can, uh, you can check that out when it comes out, but I'll talk a little bit about it tonight. Uh, I don't know how many folks have got a chance to get this yet. It seems like it just came on the U S market. Not all that long ago. I want to say, shit, it must have been maybe just the last couple of weeks. I haven't really seen it anywhere until recently. Um, this was the first weekend I actually went out to any shops since this whole pandemic started. I've been kind of playing it, playing it safe, ordering stuff off the Internet. But I swung by a, uh, a local shop uh, just across the river from me in, in southern New Jersey. And, um, yeah, they had a bunch of them on the shelf. It was like 45 bucks or something. So I had to grab one. Well, I grabbed two. <laughs> it's the first batch, you know. I'm going to grab two of them. Why not? Mm. Anyways, yeah. So we're going to say sayonara to this Johnny Walker 18. I've actually, I think this is what the fifth or sixth uh, Tuesday live live uh, happy hour that I've done. I think I've sipped this like every happy hour that we've done. So this is gonna, we're going to say goodbye to this tonight. Good bottle. Not sure I would buy it again. Depends on the price. 60 bucks, sure. I don't know if I'd go much more, 60, 65 maybe. It's solid though, solid blend. You know, people hate on Johnny Walker, but also a really nice bottle. It's a little more of a fancy Johnny Walker bottle. But yeah, um, this was a good one. We'll put this on its side, get the last uh, the last out of it while we uh, sip this tram. The thing about this Johnny Walker 18 that kind of bummed me out is um, it's only 40% ABV. You know, the Johnny Walker uh, 15, the green, that one is 43, at least here in the States. If you're if you're in um, the UK, it might still be 40, but it's a uh, yeah, it's a good release. 43 percent. I think it's still my favorite of the Johnny Walkers that I've had so far. I've had the, you know, the red, the black, the blue, the the green. And now this 18, which used to be called the gold and then was called the platinum. Some shit, you know, they're always changing the marketing on it. But, man, this is nothing to sneeze at. I bet you a lot of people who are prejudiced on Johnny Walkers would, would if you gave this to them blind, they might actually quite like it. I think it's a, it's kind of on par with the Chivas Regal 18, which is another good, solid blend. Um, I just wouldn't pay too much for it. Especially when there's so many fine single malts out there you could be spending that money on, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Daniel's back with his... Uh, with his uh, a bit about what's in his infinity bottle, talking about Glen going 12, Glen Warren G18 or 14, Knob Creek single barrel, Will It Rye 4, Compass Box Oak, Oak Cross, Nika Coffee. And look at this list. Wow, so you're putting bourbon and scotch all into one, one infinity bottle, man. That's interesting. So you're just doing like you're just pouring like one dram in or do you got like a certain amount of each you put in or you put more of some in than others? I don't know. Um, I haven't messed around with it yet. Like I said, hey, Rob Klompster's in the house. Rob, nice to see you, man. Happy Tuesday. Rob's coming in talking about Douglas Lang has a bottling for each reason. Oh, right, right, right. So those are basically like infinities. I've seen that Rock Oyster uh, and the Timorous Beastie I've seen. I have not seen the other ones. I haven't messed around with any of them. Be curious if any of them are any good. Are they pricey? <laughs> Jason Coates, end of an era. <laughs> yeah, right? This Johnny Walker 18 lasted me about, I don't know, close to a month. So two months, maybe? It's not bad, man. I usually don't get through things that quick. Uh, the, um, the thing about it, I think, is it just doesn't have the that kind of more assertive peatiness that you get out of the 15. And that again, that 3% is, it matters. 
for sure. It definitely matters. I just think that, I mean, it also comes in like, look at this box that comes in. Man. Look at this. It's a nice solid box, but I mean, this is, it almost looks like a thing you'd see at travel retail, you know what I'm saying? Or uh, something that you would just, this is just made for gift giving, you know, wrap this up, 18 year old Johnny Walker folks would be, you know, folks would like this if they're not big whiskey heads. It looks nice on the shelf, all that jazz. But it says it's got a couple different in here. Uh, Cardew, Glen Elgin, Blair Athol. And it says it's got some beautifully aged island malts uh, that they've selected for the subtle smokiness. But they don't tell you what it is. It's probably, I'm going to guess it's Talisker. I think they use that in the 15. It's Talisker or it's, uh, what's the other one? Kalila maybe. I'm not sure. It's weird that they don't tell you, but yeah, the 40% ABV is obviously kind of a bummer, but you know, ain't the worst stuff in the world. I'll tell you that. And I feel like it's like 18 different malts in it or something like that. So I feel like it's not too bad. It's got a good enough body. Cool. Uh, what else is going on, y'all? We got eight people in already. Right on, man. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Feel free to hop in the chat and say hi. Raise a glass to y'all. Hope you're all doing well. Another week. Two slows in the house. What's up? How you doing? Daniel said his infinity bottle. I just want to add too much smoke. Yeah, I, I get that. That makes sense. Unless you're doing like an Isla or something. Yeah. Diageo, Smoky Island, got to be Talisker. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I think Talisker is the one that they have in the Johnny Walker uh, 15, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's. I think that they use Talisker in that. I don't quite remember for sure. Let me see if I can look it up right quick. Yeah, what does that say? Yeah, you're right. It's, it's Talisker. So I bet you this 15's got a little Talisker in it, or the 18, rather. Right on. Uh, good to hear you're doing well too slow. Thanks for swinging by. You're usually first one in. A little slow on it today. <laughs> yeah, I just laughed at that. Anyways, what's everybody sipping on tonight? I know we got uh, somebody, uh, Nestor was in here earlier talking about drinking Ardbeg, uh, Ardbeg 10. We have... Uh, who else has got something good in the glass? Somebody else said, oh, yeah, Mark, Matt D's here doing some Deanston 12. I've actually never had the Deanston 12. Uh, I've heard nothing good things. I think that was, um, if I'm not mistaken, man, somebody can let me know. Ralphie said, uh, had that as like whiskey of the year this year, I think. I've never actually seen it in the store. I'm not sure how, how that's worked out, but uh, Nestor's back. A little work today for too slow. Yeah, Johnny Walker 18 is solid. Yeah, solid's about the way I'd put it. Jason Coates says, I think they'd mention Isla by name if they meant Kalila. Oh, for the, the Pete and the Johnny Walker 18. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, you know, you never know, man. The way that some of these marketing folks go, they're always saying some weird stuff. Subtle, subtle use of words as a way to try to uh, do their advertising, man. You never quite know. But that makes sense to me. It would probably be uh, Talisker because I know that that's the one that's in the Johnny Walker green. Rob Klomstra is talking about the Douglas Lang regional bottlings are very well priced. I've had them all but the Scallywag. Yeah, I've never had any of those. i got to look at that, man. Jason says, get yourself a Deanston 12. Really? Holy crap. All right. I'll keep my eyes out for it. I'll be real with you. I like to try anything that, you know, I like Ralphie's channel a lot. He's, I think, was one of the first channels I got in, probably like a lot of you. And um, he mentioned, yeah, it was Deanston 12 was his thing this year. I usually try to grab a bottle of what he uh, recommends as his whiskey of the year because I think the dude's got good taste. So I'm going to check that out. I think it was his whiskey of the year for like – was it 2019, 2018? I'm not even sure. I'd have to go back and look, but that's the one I haven't had. The last couple he did, I think it was like Art Bag 10. Uh, he had uh, another one that was um, Glen Alkey 12. 
I got a bottle of that. That was solid. Jason Coates. Oh, this is the Island Green. Oh, that's the Johnny Walker. I've never had that. Are those just like PD versions of the, is it still a 15 year? I've actually never seen that one in the stores. Daniel's talking about uh, Deanston 18 from Drew at Scotch for Dummies. I've never seen a bottle of Deanston. Uh, the Deanston 18 is the bourbon one. I actually haven't had a chance to try that. Mark P. go. How you doing, Mark? Happy Tuesday. Slanch man. Thanks for swinging by. Hope you're doing well. Another week in the books. Hope you're uh, staying healthy. What are you drinking on tonight? Matt D said, "Yeah, Ralphie's whiskey of the year for twenty of the year twenty twenty. Oh, oh, I see. So he calls it. He says it's for this year. I see. Okay, I'll have to go back and look at that. I actually haven't had the chance to try it. As I said, I don't see it on the shelf. I see other Deanston. So the the one Deanston that I had, I did a review of it a couple of weeks ago. It was the um, Bordeaux cask finish. It's like a eight or nine year, nine year." All red wine Bordeaux cast, freaking fantastic stuff. Uh, Deanston, Deanston seems like they do their stuff proper, and they have. Um, I think they do most of their stuff non chill filtered. They have a ton of wine cask stuff too that you just can't find in the states, from what I've heard. So, you know, that's how it goes. Oh shit! Mark bought Shiva's eighteen year old for his birthday today. Hey man, happy birthday, Mark! Thanks for swinging by and spending some time with us, man. Show this boy some love, y'all. Shivas 18, man. Solid stuff. I was just actually talking a little bit about that earlier compared to this uh, Johnny Walker 18. They're kind of in that same wheelhouse. I like the Shivas a little bit more. That's a good pour, man. And reasonably priced, too. You can get those for a decent price. I think I got a really good deal on it. When I when I got a bottle of that, they had this place had like uh, 1.75 liter bottles of it for like 70 bucks. So, man, but I went through that quick. That was a great... That was a great, like, just, like, everyday dram. You know, you're not sure what you want. But happy birthday, man. Enjoy that pour. Glad you swung by. So Jason Coates is talking about the Island Green. Yeah, travel retail exclusive. Basically, smokier green level. Well, I might have to try that. That sounds good. Right on. Mark's getting some birthday love from folks. Too slow is working on the Glendronic 15 Revival. Yeah, man. Can't go wrong with that. That's... Man, that stuff is so good. I I almost like everything Glendronic does. Um, the only one that I thought was maybe not worth it, and plus, you know, of course, Glendronic's prices on their core range stuff have skyrocketed over the last year. The only one that I wasn't as blown away by as I wanted it was the 21-year-old Parliament. So I guess with the uh, the 21 Parliament, the, um, the 15 Revival, and the 12 Original, all are Oloroso with PX, and then the 18 Allardyce is all Oloroso. Um, that one was my favorite. The 15 Revival's right behind it. And of course, they got like a cast strength and stuff. I've just not had the chance to try any of that stuff. $74.99, you got that Shivas for right on, man. Yeah, it's a good bottle, man, for sure. That'll be a nice pour to uh, celebrate your special day, man, so enjoy that. I'm going to, uh, in a few minutes here, let's see what else we got out of this. Oh, yeah. Right at the end here, we'll just polish off this Johnny Walker 18 for sure. Make it official. Adios, JW18. I don't know if I'm going to see another bottle of this in my immediate future. I think this is probably one I won't buy again, but solid stuff. All right. After this, we'll talk about that Wee BC. Any of y'all had the Wee BC yet? Dram Dude's in the house. Santa Cruz is in the house. Hey, what's up, you guys? Happy Tuesday. Thanks for swinging by happy hour. Hope all is well with you and yours in these crazy days. <laughs> Daniel says it's a good cork pop. Yeah, they, they use real corks on the Johnny Walker. This Johnny Walker 18's got real cork. You'd think they'd use the cheaper ones, but, you know, especially for something like this that's just made for a gift you know coming in this crazy ass big box so yeah solid pour solid solid pour i might hang on to this bottle this might be a good bottle to do uh, infinity in like some of y'all were talking about earlier this might be pretty good for that it's a nice bottle it's kind of like the same johnny walker but it's got these kind of rounded edges they try to make it a little fancier it is an 18 year old 
that's that. We'll kill this one, and we'll talk about that wee beastie. Good to see you, Santa Cruz and Dram D, man. I hope you guys are doing well. Thanks for swinging in. If you guys are sipping at all, I'd love to hear what you got in your glasses tonight. As I mentioned, if you haven't been on the on the happy hour before, usually a little bit after 9 o'clock when I get the bat signal from my my good friend Telex, the Whiskey Tech, will be heading on over to his channel to continue the chat tonight. He's going to be doing uh, Lagavulin. He's going to be reviewing the Lagavulin 10-year-old, which is a travel retail exclusive. Uh, I tried to find that when I was over in uh, London and Dublin last year, but uh, it had just come out and they didn't have it in the Dublin uh, airport, unfortunately, so I didn't get a chance to bring a bottle home. But the uh, yeah, they released a 10. There's a freaking Lagavulin 10 on the market, y'all. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's 43%. I don't know. We'll see what Telex has to say about it in about eh, a little bit less than an hour. But I'm sure it's probably solid. I really like the eight-year-old. The, the Lagavulin 8 was, I think it was like 46 or 48%, man. Punchy as all hell. Good, young Lagavulin, but super quality. In certain ways, I liked it even more than the 16. Um. So yeah, we'll we'll get into talking about Lagavulin uh, when we head over to Talix's channel. But mm. man, I'm gonna miss this Johnny Walker 18. I should have put a little bit in a sample bottle. Do any of you guys do that when you get a bottle you really like? You just pour another sampler of it to stash away for later times. I have a pretty good stash of sample bottles actually filled with stuff that I really like. It'd be fun to go revisit, but I didn't do it with this Johnny Walker 18. So. Can't save them all, right? All right. All right. Looks like we got 12 folks on. Why don't we get into the wee beastie? We got a fresh glass for this one. All right, y'all. So here's the bottle. Our big wee beastie. I uncorked it over the weekend. I did uh, an uncorking review. I don't do a lot of those, but I, when I get a new bottle that's just come out, I like to do one of these uncorkings where I just kind of do a down and dirty review without, you know, spending time writing down the notes. Just see what I get initially off of it. It's kind of fun, change of pace thing. I got a couple of them that I've done, but so the specs on this Ardbeg Wee Beastie, five years old. Interesting thing, they put the five on the bottle. I gotta give them props for that. I mean, they could have just made this an NAS, right? Like a lot of folks do, but this is a little, I think this is a little shout out to uh, to the the whiskey folks. You know, Ardbeg, I think with the exception of the 10, all of their core range is NAS. I know that 19 year old is debatable whether it's in their core range or not, but they, um, they don't normally put age statements on. So the fact that they threw the five years on this, I'm gonna give them props for that. This is an interesting thing, man. Um, so 47.4% ABV, non-chill. Of course, they don't actually mention that it's natural color, but I think most art bags are. And once you have put this in the glass and y'all look at it, you'll, you'll probably think it's natural color. So here's one more look at the label. I don't know what they're going for here. It's like a literal beast claw or something like that. It doesn't come in a box either. It's just a straight up, uh, straight up bottle on the shelf. Man, though, when you initially nose it out of the bottle, it just smells like a classic art bag. All right, let's put a little bit of this in the glass. I'll let this chill for a few minutes and we'll get into it. Man. This is an, it's just an interesting thing, man. I think like, I think their strategy here with the Wee Beastie is trying to get something in in that sub $50 range, right? Cause the Ardbeg 10 has now gotten up into like the 50, 55 range. This is about five, 10 bucks cheaper. The Anno, I don't know, depending on where you are is in that like 65, 70 range. Um, and then of course, like Uga Doll is like closer to 80, 90 and then Corey reckons like 90, hundred depends on what you're, where you're finding it. But yeah, this will be uh this is an interesting pour. I think they're trying to get in on this market. So like maybe this is comparable to the Lafroig uh, Select. I think the Select is the low the lowest end Lafroig. Um although that one's an NAS, so <laughs> guaranteed 5 years old. That's hilarious. All right. 
Let me catch up on the chat while I let that rest and finish this Johnny Walker and we'll get into it. Tram dude. Haven't seen that R big around yet. Yeah, I just found it, man. So I was mentioning earlier, I went out for the first time basically since this coronavirus stuff. Philly's been hit pretty hard by the coronavirus thing. And so we're still on lockdown. I haven't really ventured out too much. I don't really want to mess around with it. But uh, I went over and found it in a shop in South Jersey. They had it at a place called Benash Liquors, which is a store that I frequent quite a bit. We get a little bit of discount because I'm part of this Philadelphia Whiskey Society thing. They also have it at Total Wine in Cherry Hill. If any of you guys are in South Jersey, they had a bunch of them at, at Total Wine. So you can grab it there. I'm not sure. It's probably not been on the shelf longer than like a week or two. But uh, yeah, oh, Dram dude said, oh, regarding the sample bottles, used to take the last 50 mils and put it in a sample bottle. But that didn't last long. Now I typically put it into an infinity bottle. You do the infinity bottle too. Okay. This is good to know, man. I got to get in on this infinity bottle thing. I haven't done it for a while. Now, do you have like a special decanter you use or do you just find a bottle that you like and kind of use that? Because I'm thinking that might be the route I, I go. I don't have any decanters that are worth a damn or anything. Uh, Daniel says, bro, I appreciate you doing the pre-show. It's really good. Hey, cheers, man. Yeah, this is a lot of fun, man. We've been doing this for about a little over a month now. Um, Telix, the whiskey tech, and I have been buddies for whiskey friends, you know, for a couple of years. And so we're doing this weekly Tuesday show now together on his channel. And so having a little bit of a uh, uh, little pregame happy hour, good chance to get to chat with y'all before we get into uh, what's on his agenda. So appreciate that, Daniel. Slancha. Andrew Page is in the house. What's up, man? I've <laughs> been looking for that art bag five. <laughs> Where'd you find it? Yeah, man. Um, Andrew is actually somebody that's relatively local to me. Head over to uh, Total Wine in Cherry Hill, forty-seven ninety-nine a bottle. They also had it at Benash Liquor. It was a little bit more. Obviously, if you can afford it, spend a little bit more and support the independent uh, local shop. But you know, if you got to hit up Total Wine, you got to hit up Total Wine. Either way, you can get yourself a bottle. You're doing some of the Chag Ten tonight, right on, man. That's a good pour. Tram dude just uses a normal bottle. Yeah, right on. I went to find Lecheg 10 today and found the price card and no bottle, $62. Is that an okay price? 62 is about, yeah, for Lecheg 10, that's a little bit on the high end, but inflation plus just yearly costs going up. 62 seems fair. I wouldn't go much higher than that, though. Normally, I find that in the like 50, 55 range. So I don't know where we talk about six, seven bucks. Pull the trigger, especially if you haven't had it before. Lecheg 10 is a great pour. That's a real good one. All right. So here's what it looks like. As I mentioned, man, I did an uncorking review. It'll post Friday. Y'all can check that out if you're into such things. This is what the wee beastie looks like. Um, my review video will post Friday, probably right around like 6.30 Eastern time. So y'all can grab it, if check it out if you're interested in such things. But basically, this is what, the, this is what that wee beastie looks like. Doesn't look like it's colored to me. As I mentioned, they actually don't put a box on the Wee Beastie. It's just straight up in the bottle, which I guess makes sense, given kind of what the price point they're going for, kind of a no frills. Um, one more look, five years prominently displayed. Props to Ardbeg for putting the age statement on. And one more time, 47.4% ABV. All right, so I've had this open a couple of days. Interesting thing on the nose, right? So for me, Ardbeg, always comes in heavy with that road tar kind of earthiness. I don't get that that much on here. And that's, I think, because it's just not spent as much time in the barrel. This, it's much more spirity. It's almost a little more on the citrus fruit kind of thing. The nose reminds me closer to uh, Kilhoman Mocker Bay or Kalila. More citrus fruit, brighter, much brighter. Yeah, you know, not a lot of complexity going on, I guess, so far on the nose. Lemon, earthy, kind of grassy notes, sweetness, vanilla. It's probably, I think it's all ex-bourbon for the short five years that it's aged.
Mm. Punchy, sweet, heavy pepper, pine needle. I'm telling you, this thing hits, this thing hits hard. It hits hard. It is, it's sweet. And then immediately you are hit with like the, the art bag that I would compare it to most in terms of how punchy and intense it is, is the Cory Vrecken. That European oak on the Cory Vrecken, you get that like heavy pepper note, tons of pepper on this one. Short to short, medium finish. You're left with a little bit of vanilla, slight caramel, a little bit of that citrus, a little grassy note. It's got a relatively decent amount of complexity for five years. Um, I'm not going to tell you my score yet, but I'm going to revisit this in a couple months. Like I said, my uncorking review is going to post Friday, and then I'll uh, I'll probably revisit this. But spirity, youthful, peppery. Again, that that signature kind of Ardbeg style is not as present here as I notice on other ones. It, and I think it's just because of the, the lack of age on it, to be real. Like this is kind of like what closer to what a new make spirit may be for our bag. It does have that nice kind of like effervescent peatiness. I mean, it's definitely heavily peated. And I give them props for putting at 47%. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. 47 point, what is it? 47.4%. Yeah. They do have a bunch of tasting notes on here talking about savory meats and stuff. I don't really get the meaty note maybe after it opens up a bit, but as you can see, I've already put a little bit of a dent in this. Mint to menthol mint kind of alcohol thing at the end. Solid. I don't think it's anything remarkable, but totally solid. 47 bucks is what I found it for. I think it's probably going to hover in that, you know, USD 45 to $50 range. But here's the thing. I'll just be real with y'all. Um, yeah, this is cool. I was excited because I love our bag. I don't think this is, I mean, for 10 bucks, for like, in some cases, less than five bucks more, you can get a bottle of our bag 10, get the 10. The 10 is just a better pour. But, you know, it's fun. If you're an our bag fan, grab a bottle. I just don't think it's, I don't think it's anything remarkable. Yeah. We'll put a little water on it in a minute, see what happens. We catch up on the chat. Oh, man, yeah. Uh, Daniel, I picked one up. Andrew Page picked one up in North Jersey, 55. Cool. Oh, Super Social Club's in. Excited about that art bag, that five-year. Yeah, man, nice to see you. Thanks for swinging by happy hour, man. Hope you're doing well. I know you're uh, north of the border in Canada, I believe. Hope you're doing good, buddy. Thanks for swinging by. And... Uh, yeah, I uh, hope this hits the market up there soon. If you're an Ardbeg fan, you'll, you'll definitely want to try this. Jason Coates says, yeah, no weed beastie here unless it's in the last time. I, I'm telling you, man, like I I hadn't been out for, you know, really went out to liquor shops in probably over a month because of, you know, the coronavirus situation and the way it's been hitting Philly. But yeah, man, I walked into two shops uh, over in South Jersey and they had it. So I'm assuming this is just hitting the U.S. market now. Mm. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I, I don't, uh, I would say grab a bottle if you love art bag, but what I think you're, what I think most folks are going to come away with is like, oh, this is fun. It's a punchier version of the 10, but the 10 just has more complexity and more of that signature art bag kind of rotar medicinal thing that, at least for me, not medicinal, but earthiness uh, for me is just kind of why I love it so much. Does it say the cast type? No, I don't think so. Let me take one more look. So Sipper, as I was mentioning, they actually don't, there's no box for it. It just comes in a straight up bottle. Here's what it's got to say. You know, so it's got some advertising jargon, some tasting notes. First come intense aroma of cracked black pepper. Yeah, totally. Yeah, no, it doesn't tell you. Let me take a look at the front one more time. No, I'm assuming this is bourbon. I don't get any sherry notes in this at all. 
This is definitely, or I, maybe it's European oak. Given how peppery and spicy it is, I guess that would be my first inclination. Maybe it's European oak, but it's probably ex-bourbon. And I think that pepperiness is just coming from how freaking youthful this is. Not sure. But, you know, one thing I do appreciate, so they actually have the uh, the date scan on it of when it's bottled. So this is the first one I know for sure. I could grab two of them. But getting some saltiness too, damn. Yeah, not sure. We'll see. Uh, might have to do a little internet research to find out what it's actually aged and I'm not, it's not entirely clear to me. But my guess is ex-bourbon. I think the 10 is all ex-bourbon. Nothing around me shows up in the last 10 days. Oh, Peter White's in the house. <laughs> 10 year old is greater than the rest of the core range, says Jason Coates. That might be fighting words. <laughs> I don't know. Let's talk. We still got a good half hour to go. Let's let's get in. Let's throw down on our bag. Core range. What's your ranking? How do you put all the core range? I'll tell you mine in a minute. I'm not sure I agree with Jason Coates here. <laughs> Peter White's I can say please say I'll never buy that bottle. <laughs> You're a better man than me, my friend. Good to see you, dude. Salancha. Happy uh, happy Tuesday, man. Thanks for swinging by. Hope you you and yours are well. Is there any whiskey that's been finished in Irish whiskey barrels? That's a good question. Man, I don't know. Folks in the chat might know something about that. Jesus, sipper. I'm sipping on some Arbeg Renaissance. Man, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> you're on some you're on a different level than me brother renaissance is that is that one of the uh the committee releases from like i don't know 2011 or something i'm not sure i've even heard of that i'd love to hear more about it though <laughs> all right here comes our here, here comes folks with their art bag rankings jason coates <laughs> jason coates isn't messing around man <laughs> he knows it's all about the 10 for him Dude, you crack me up, man. It's so fun chatting with you. <laughs> Thanks for swinging by. <laughs> I'm not saying I disagree, but I'm not saying I agree either. Daniel says number one, Corey Vrecken. Jason Coates says the other Arbigs are flavor, <laughs> flavor Triscuits. Sure, they're more complex, but I'm not sure that makes them much better. All right. I'll get into that in a second. All right, Daniel's got his out. Corey Vrecken, Oogie, 10, haven't had any others. All right. I'm, that's fair. Drum was good, too, he says. That's cool. Um, I go back and forth on the Corey Vrecken, Oogie. I think Oogadal was probably, I have a soft spot for it because it was such a euphoric experience when I had it for the first time. It was my first ever you know, Oloroso sherry or any sherry influence, peated scotch. And that one just blew my freaking mind. Um, I think I go Oogie one, Corey Vrecken. Ugh. Here's the thing. I take price into consideration. I mean, that's just the way I do my channel. It's the way I think about whiskey. Like is Corey Vrecken $50 worth $50 more than the 10? I think my answer is no. So I think I go Oogie 10, Corey Vrecken, and then distant fourth is the anno and then distant fifth from the anno is this wee beastie actually maybe not distant fifth i think the anno and the wee beastie are kind of at loggerheads for me i haven't had an anno in a while i might have to get another bottle to try it out but i didn't love the anno it was like diet arbeg to me i just didn't i didn't enjoy it whiskey uh, uh telex the whiskey tech we'll be hanging out with later for for our uh tuesday night show he'll He'll go to the mat for he'll go to the mat for the uh, art bag. I know I uh, I won't. That was my second whiskey review. Actually, was the no, and uh, I think I gave it a three out of five. I'm not sure if I would do the same thing now. Yeah, so I think I go Oogie Oogadal one, art bag ten two. Close is art bag quarter reckon at three. Distant fourth is anno, and then close to the anno is fifth is the sweet beastie. And we'll see. Um, I think this is more aggressive and like what I like about Ardbeg than the than the Anno. The Anno I just thought was a little bit light on the palate. This one's got some pop, but it has a very short finish. 
it's it's just kind of like distilled to the essence you know like this is the essence of an art bag right here but it just the thing that i miss the most from this and maybe my nose is off i just don't get that like dark road tar slightly dark fruit that kind of just vegetal earthiness that you get from an art bag nose it's just not quite as there as much. I mean, I know the 10, you know, the 10 is a little bit lighter on the nose too, but I think the 10 just has more complexity. And for like less than 10 bucks more, why would you buy this if you can get the 10? I don't know. But we'll see. Maybe for some folks, this is like 10, 15 bucks cheaper. I don't know. I'm going to put a little water on it though. 47% ABV. We'll do about a teaspoon. It's not bad. Ah, uh, Daniel says, by price, Oogie 10, 10, 10, Corey Vreckin, then we, man, I guess. <laughs> I hear you on that. Oh, Sipper Social Club said, uh, Renaissance is a 10-year-old release bottled in 2008. It was the last of the series that came out when Arbeg reopened in 1907. Damn. Bro, that's a unicorn right there. I'd love to get a hand on, a hand on that. Wow. That must be incredible. I'll have to check. I don't know if you've done a, a video review, but if you have, I'm going to go check a look at that for sure. That's so cool. Don Holland is in the house. 10, 10, 10 and Corey says Don Holland. <laughs> Cheers, man. Not a lot of huge Ugadol lovers in here. That's interesting. Super Social Club says, I go Corey, 10, Ugadol, I know. Okay. So yeah, swap the Corey and the Ugi and, that's, and I'm meeting you right there. Interesting. Peter White's in the house, man. Cheers, Peter. Nice to see you, man. Happy Tuesday. Hope you're doing well. It says our bag is in, is in expensive in Ontario and shipping is expensive, so our bag is a rare purchase for me. Oh, man. Yeah, fuck. That sucks. I hope you get the opportunity to try some of them. I mean, I don't know what's worth the cost, really. I mean, if you're going to get one art bag out of their core range, for me, it's the Ugadal. Others, oh, a lot more folks here seem to disagree and they go Corey Vreckon or 10. So, no help for you here. Oh, Peter White says the Oogie's the only one on his bar. Oogie fan. I'm with you, Peter. I'm in the Oogie camp. <laughs> Super Social Club going to do that Renaissance art bag next week. Yeah, if you guys aren't, I mean, if anybody in here is not. Uh, Sub to Super Social Club, man. You got to go check that. Uh, check out his channel. He does good stuff. And apparently he's going to be doing this fancy Arbeg 10 in like a week. So you got to go check that out. Oh, shit. Swami's in the house. What's up, Swami? Nice to see you, man. Thanks for swinging by. Sipping on a little bit of the uh, new Arbeg Wee Beastie. Spirity. That's my that's my one word review. Andrew Page, I got a few shipped from uh, Benash last month. Good company. We'll order. Dude, Benash Liquors, I'm not going to go on too far because most of y'all ain't in Philly, Jersey area, but I love that place. They give discounts to Philadelphia Whiskey Society members. And the guy I've tasted, he pours so many tasters. If you sit there and chat with him for a while, uh, he goes above and beyond to get you a whiskey you like. Man, he's a cool ass dude. I definitely recommend it. Hit that place up if you're ever in the area. Daniel's got a heel left of the Oogie. It's not going in my infinity belly. Yeah, I hear you. Peter White said, did not did not like the groove CR too much. Gifted the heel. Oh man. Well, we could talk CRs. I like the grooves. On CRs, the ones I've had, Kelpie, Darko, but only a taste. Darko was the best. Drum, black. And Aura Verdes, I don't remember what it was called. I'd go Dark Cove was the best. Black is second for sure. Groove's third. Dist, uh, fourth Kelpie. Distant fifth is the drum. The drum I thought was pretty whack. <laughs> Malton Malchel sipping on some scissorp. <laughs> oh, man. I kind of want to play 3 6 Mafia right now. <laughs> Dude, you're wild. <laughs> Anybody a fan of Three Six Mafia back in the '90s? Shout out, <laughs> tear the club up. That's funny. All right, 
so with water on this with water on this um weed beastie tames that pepper down a lot and now it's it like it's just gotten flatter and i don't mean this in a bad way i don't think this is a bad whiskey i just don't think it's like uh if you're a seasoned peat drinker or an Arbeg fan, like you got to get it just because it's a new fucking Arbeg, right? And it's cheap. I don't think it's going to blow your mind. It might be better than the Anno. <laughs> but again, man, the, it, this is reminding me of more of Mocker Bay and what it lacks for me, which is what I think is the most important thing. The thing I love about Arbeg is that like Rotar, just like railway tile almost like gasoline fire, dark, earthy peat smoke. You just don't really get it on this. This is more like the Mocker Bay, more like, you know, Kalila 12. This is what it is. Right on, though. Like, I'm not hating. Give them mad props. They put a five-year-old age statement on a bottle. They could have just nas this like anybody else and called it a day. I'll give them props for that. <laughs> Malta, Montreal, yeah, buddy. <laughs> Tear the club up. Mark, the birthday boy. Mark Stengel's birthday, y'all. Drinking the Carmagadon 2 3DX video card. I'm not sure what that is. Sorry, man. <laughs> Daniel says, I saw 3-6 Mafia live on Beale Street Music, Music Festival in 2002. My freshman year in college. Right after Bush and right before Stone Temple Pilots. <laughs> You got to be kidding me, man. Are you making that up? They just like wedge three, six mafia in there. You might as well. Uh, <laughs> I'm surprised Cypress Hill wasn't there. <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. And also awesome, man. See Stone Temple Pilots in <laughs> three, six mafia in one night. That's crackish, man. That's too funny. That's cracking me up. Anyways, yeah. So that's where we're at, man. Definitely non-chill filter, they say it. You can tell. Look at it. Look at that. Look how much that's changed since the color I showed you earlier. That's just with like half teaspoon of water in it. Misty. I'm not gonna tell you what my score is. My like I said, my video is gonna post Friday. I did an uncorking video of this. I might have been a little harder on this than I should have. It's tasting a little better tonight, but not better enough. I do the five point scale in 0.25 increments. You can take a wild guess where I put this, but <laughs> Daniel says unreal show. Nope. I have pictures in the lineup card. So much fun. <laughs> Three, six mafia and some temple pots. I can't get over that. That's too funny, man. That's too funny. All right. I'm going to do just a little bit more of this. We beastie. Cause why not? <laughs> I mean, look, I'll, I'll give them this. At least they're not doing it like Lafroig, where they're just going to give you some 40% select thing that's chill filtered and colored to death and no age statement. As much as I love Lafroig, like, I got to give Ardbeg the props on this one. Age statement, 47.4%. Non chill. They do it right. I'll give them props for that. No box, though. Straight up bottle which I also kind of appreciate. Who needs all these fucking boxes anyways? Just being real. Trying to make their stuff look fancier than it is. At least they know that they can't make this look fancy. <laughs> uh, some happy birthdays to Mark. Yeah, man. Super cool to have you hanging out. Thanks for swinging by. If folks didn't see earlier, Mark got himself a nice bottle of the Chivas Regal 18, which he's sipping on tonight for his birthday, man. Mad cheers to that. Hope you're enjoying it. That's a good pour. <laughs> Daniel's Daniel's talking about this show in in Memphis. <laughs> Gavin Rosdale, <laughs> wild dude. I wonder what Three Six Mafia is doing right now. I'm hoping they're like in uh, in their studio. Andrew Page has got his ranking up for the art bags. Corey Ten Ugadal and oh man, wow. Peter White and I are the only uh, the only Oogies. Oogie first folks in this in this chat right now. Yeah, man. Yeah, here, here comes the love for that birthday pour for you, Mark. 
Swami's Swami's loving that Chivas 18. I'm with you on that. Daniel says he's always wanted to try it. You should, man. It's good. So I just polished off earlier the Johnny Walker 18, which I think is comparable, but maybe not quite as good. Um, dude, Chivas 18 is solid, and it's at a really good price for a blended 18, especially if you can get it on sale, obviously. It's a good pour. Reviewed it a month back. Well, there you go, Mark. If you're not a sub on uh, Swami Swab's Montreal channel, you should head over there and hit it. Hey, if you want to hear about a fancy ass art bag, sub Sipper Social Club, because he's got uh he's gonna be doing this art bag renaissance tonight or uh next for his review, which sounds like it's awesome. Next time in Las Vegas, swing by, he said Mark said, Yeah, man, for sure. If I'm ever out that way, we'll definitely connect. That'd be fun. Daniel says, and not crazy price for an 18. Is anyone he tried? The new 13 mile. Are you talking about Chivas Regal? They have a, if you are, I didn't know they had a 13. Sounds decent enough. I don't know. The Chivas 12, I can't even remember the last time I had it. But I, mean, I think the only Chivas I've had. So I've had the Chivas 18, and then I have the, um, the Mizanara cask Chivas, which... I don't know. It's okay. I actually have two. I bought two bottles of it because I thought it was going to be something amazing. Um, the first one I had, it was pretty solid, but nothing like remarkable. I think it's like 40, 50 bucks. I'd have just assumed by the 18, but I should revisit that. It's been a while. So yeah, I'm not sure about this nine, uh, this 13 year old bro. Um, if that's a, if that's actually a, uh, a Shiv is 13. And it's probably got some type of finish. If you know, let me know. Oh, yeah, yeah. He just said it. Yeah, Don Holland loves, likes the Mizanara cask. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, the Shiv is red and white 13. I just started noticing it. I don't know anything about that. Anybody had that before? Red and white. Might just throw it in the machine here and see what's up. Shiv is Regal 13. Oh, yeah, it totally exists. Red and white. What's the deal with it? Wow. United. It's a, it's a Manchester United special. So it's like a soccer thing. Looks like it might be UK only. American. Oh, it's finished in American rye. Shit. That might be interesting. Here's the link if anybody wants to read about it. Long ass link. <laughs> I broke it up into two messages. That's ridiculous. Yeah, apparently there's a Chivas Regal 13 with a rye finish, and I'm all about that. You want to get a good rye finish whiskey? Glenmorn G Spios. Solid. That was one of their private editions. I think it was from 2018 or something like that. Man, that's a really good pour. Daniel says it's in Texas. I don't know. Has anybody had this? I don't know how many blended Scotch fans there are out there, but this uh, this Chivas Regal 13 year old is um, is a rye cask finish blended Chivas. Check it out. Mm. So we're about to hit that nine o'clock hour soon. So um, we'll hang out for maybe 10, 15 after. I'll throw the link. Uh, I'm going to head over and do uh, the weekly show with Telex a little bit after that. And uh, tonight he's going to be, he's reviewing Lagavulin 10. It's travel exclusive. So we're going to be chatting Lagavulin. I got a, uh, the only Lagavulin I have left, I have the Lagavulin. This is a Lagavulin 12. This is that like cast strength release they do every year. This is the 2018 version. Really, really good stuff. We'll get into a bit of that. Um, recently I've had Lagavulin uh, Distillers Edition, which is a really great pour. Also the... Um, 11 year old Nick Offerman edition, which has kind of been making the rounds around the US for the last, I don't know, year or so. Solid stuff as well. Mark says he's also has the Glen Morgy 10 original. Yeah, I can't go wrong with that, man. Solid everyday pour. Daniel said, What rye, what rye finish you say? Oh, the Shivas Regal? 
The Shivas Regal 13 is a rye finish Shivas. Also, yeah, the Glen Morangy rye finish is called the Spios, S-P-I-O-S. This is like each year they do a, uh, a limited release. It's called like their private edition. I think the Spios is from 2018, but dude, it's still everywhere. Like you can find it online or probably in a shop. They must just have a lot of, uh, they must make uh, bottle a lot of their private releases because I want to say it was 2018, maybe it was 2019. I don't know, but you can still find it. It's right around that like $80 range. It's really good. Really, really good. You should get your hands on it if you can. Rye, rye finished scotch. I think, uh, you know who else just did a rye scotch, a rye finished scotch is Glen Alki. They just released like a nine year. I got to try that. We beastie. I'm liking this a little bit more, but even with a few days of oxidization, I'll be real, but we'll see. I'll revisit it. I'm somewhat new to enjoying whiskey and not crazy about the smoky peat flavor. Oh man. Well, you're in the right place because the thing about scotch is you have so many opportunities to try things that aren't peated. You know, a lot of folks seem to think that like all scotch is harsh and smoky and, you know, bitter, whatever. Dude, there's so many different varieties, you know, as you try more stuff, you can kind of find what you like. I know you're drinking that, uh, Shiva's Regal tonight, the 18 year old. Um, the Glenmorangie 10 is a great starter. I mean, those are just kind of sweet Highland malts. The Chivas 18 will actually give you a bit of a sherry note. You can start looking at some sherry whiskeys too. I would just avoid Isla if you don't like the smoky stuff quite yet. Avoid Lafroy, Ardbeg, Lagavulin, Kalila. Those are all going to be intense smoky whiskeys. Stick with like Highland malts or Speyside malts even. You know, look at things like... Uh, you know, Glendronic, Old Pulteney. Uh, you know, Highland Park might be a place to go if you want to try a little bit of smoke. They have kind of this sweet peat smoke on their stuff, so it's not heavy, punchy. Uh, Highland Park 12 would be a good one to start. It's both like uh, sherry whiskey and then also has just a slight touch of smoke. Pretty good stuff. How is that? Glenmorangie, that is, yeah, 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 Daniel, yeah, Glenmorangie Spios, man, check it out. It's a rye, it's a rye finished Glenmorangie. It's good. It's, I'm a big, Glen, I like Glenmorangie. I'm a big fan of most of their stuff. I, um, I think other than Lafroy, it's probably the one I've had the most of. <laughs> Daniel says, dude, I'm literally excited about some rye finished scotch. Yeah, you should be. Check it out. Check out the Spios. Check out the, uh, I don't know if anybody else in the chat's got um, any rye finished single malts or blended scotches that they would recommend. But the ones that come to mind for me is, yeah, Glen Morangie Spios. Uh, Glen Allocky just did like, I think a nine year rye finish. Um, check that out. And there's a couple more. I mean, obviously there's apparently a 13 year old Chivas Regal, but I mean, it looks to me like it's a UK release, but if you see it on the shelves around you, you know, maybe worth grabbing. It's not, it's not expensive. It's like 40 bucks. Yeah. It's like a special edition thing or something like that. Chivas Regal 13. Yeah. It's up on their website in the U S it's a Manchester United soccer, soccer team release. Here we go. Let me see if I can find it in any U S shops. Oh yeah. It's everywhere. Wow. <laughs> Here, looking to get this shipped to you. Here's the link. I'm seeing it for 30, 35 bucks. 13 year old Chivas Regal rye finish. They got it at a bunch of a bunch of places here. This one place, Glen Glendale Liquor, California's got it for 30 bucks. Uh, couple other places b21 which is a place that ships they're out of florida 37 bucks yeah man you want to get a handle on that grab it i'll buy the shoes regal tomorrow <laughs> yeah hello oh andrew page has got another one. early bottles of wolfburn northland had info on the bottle indicating that they were three years old but didn't have the guts was that a rye finished one too yeah Richie Z's in the house. Richie, how you doing? Man, thanks for swinging by. 
we're uh, sipping a little bit of the new Ardbeg Wee Beastie. Um, checking this out. Hope you're doing well, man. Hope you and yours are uh, staying safe. Another crazy week in coronavirus world. Daniel is Daniel is hyping. He's he's got his he's fixated on that rye finished uh, single malt. Yeah, get the Spios for sure, man. Spios is fantastic. You got to check that out. I actually have a bottle of it. I can show you what it looks like. Let me see. One second. Yeah. Here it is, man. So this is the Glenmorangie Spios. This is the rye finished Glenmorangie. It's part of their private select, uh, private edition number nine. It's fully matured in American X, right? It's not even a finish. That's right. It's fully matured, non chill filtered. This is uh, 46%. If you were excited before, you should be excited now after hearing that. Yeah, it's fully matured in rye. This is a great pour, man. Get your hands on this. Really good stuff. I got that fairly recently. I just didn't, I haven't done a review or anything yet. It's good to see you. Yeah, totally agree, Santa Cruz. And Daniel says the Wolfburn Spinex. Not sure the name. I don't know. I'm not sure anything about that one. I've not heard of it. Yeah, man. Good to see everybody, man. Hope everybody's enjoying uh, enjoying themselves as much as possible with all these crazy craziness going on. So we're at that nine o'clock hour, which means, you know, shortly. I'm gonna, uh, I'll get the bat signal from uh, my good friend Telex, the Whiskey Tech. He's going to be talking about Lagavulin tonight, and uh, we'll head over there. And for folks who want to continue the chat, him and I will talk Lagavulin. He's going to be reviewing the ten. I'm going to sip some Lagavulin twelve. We'll get in. We'll get all in on that. So that'll be fun. Jack the pickled hounds in the house saying cheers. What's up, man? Happy Tuesday, buddy. Nice to see you, Slunch. Just finishing up a dram of this. Uh, yeah, the Arbeg Wee Beastie. Solid. Solid stuff. Nothing, nothing earth shattering, but you won't be super disappointed. I still think though, I mean, just pay the extra five, ten bucks and get the Arbeg 10. It's just, it's just a better pour. All right. Before we get back into the log of one, I'm going to do a little bit of this Buna Hobbin 12. Can't go wrong with the Buna 12. Good stuff. Anyways. Yeah, man, good to see everybody. Jack's in the house. Santa Cruz in. Seeing some folks in the chat. Mark Stengel said, what's the site name? Yeah, Mark. Uh, if you're look, if you're talking about sites to try to find places that ship to you, it really depends on the state because each state's got its own laws and rules. But a good website is this one, Wine Searcher. I'll just throw it in the chat. Another one, if you're looking to get stuff shipped to you that um, that you can check out, is this one, which is uh, 1000corks.com. And what these will do is most of them will show you like if stuff can ship to your state from the internet. It's the best way to go. I mean, especially when you're in a state like me, which is uh, Pennsylvania, which is all um, state run. And while they have good selection and pretty good prices, you know, you just can't always get the variety you want. So internet's the way to fly on that. Daniel's gonna pour some Buna 12 as well. Right on, man, yeah. Do it. Can't go wrong with the Buna 12. Buna 12, I'm gonna tell you right now, the nose on this smells like you walked into like um, an old bookstore that's got just tons of books that have been sitting on the shelves for 20 years. That's that's the smell. It's, I, I can't describe it any other way. There's just that musty, kind of like just almost moldy, dusty note. It just smells like an old bookstore, which I really enjoy. There's also that fruit note too. Buna 12 is great. You can't go wrong with it. All right, I'm going to keep my eye out for... The link for Ma, uh, for our friend uh, Telex, the Whiskey Tech. We should be ready to go relatively soon here. Take a look. But in the meantime, yeah, I would love to hear what anybody else is drinking on tonight. Don Holland, 
bro, don't you find out an out a newly finished version of whiskey every day? I'm absolutely shocked. I didn't know that this existed. Oh, you're talking about that Spios. Oh yeah, man. Don Holland says, loving me some Alberta. Whoa, what was that one? Loving me some Alberta premium cast strength rye. 60. Oh man. <laughs> I can imagine. I can't ever find anything. Alberta premium. None of that stuff exists in the States, man. You can't find that stuff anywhere. Quig, uh, food Quig has sent me some samples of a bunch of Canadian whiskeys. Um, but he hasn't sent me any. He sent me some, um, a 41 year old Canadian club. He sent me some, a couple different, like an older Pike Creek and a JP Weisers, but I've not had anything from Alberta premium, but maybe some of those are connected to Alberta I, premium. I'm not sure. That sounds like a great pour though, man. Yeah. I love me a good ride. It's been a while. Jack said, I just did the drive through order online and they brought the whiskey out to my car. Yeah. Nice man. Where are you, Jack? Are you in the States? Yeah, totally, man. I'm, I'm with you on this. Yeah. Glen G. Spios fully, fully matured in rhyme. I thought it was just a finish. It's not, it's fully matured, non-chill 46%. You can't go wrong with this. You'll get this for less than a hundred bucks. It's worth it. It's a good pour. Definitely do it. Mark says the whiskey tech. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mark, um, I do a, uh, a weekly Tuesday night show, uh, with a good friend of mine, Telex, the whiskey tech. I'll drop the link in the chat once he's ready to go uh, live with his chat tonight. And then, um, we'll be heading over there in relatively short order to, uh, enjoy the show. We'll be talking about Lagavulin tonight. Jackson, New York state, no out of state shipping yet. Although New York's got relatively good prices. Um, I mean, maybe not as much New York city, but I've found there's a place within New York. Maybe you've heard of Saratoga wine exchange. That's a good one. They actually ship to PA, but I know they'll definitely will ship within New York. I'm sure you can find some pretty good stuff there. Check out Saratoga Wine Exchange. Daniel says he loves rye. Oh, interesting. Peter White. You've had if you you had barrel rye, so you also had uh, Alberta Premium cast strength. That's an interesting point. I have a bottle of a cast strength. Um, released from a, a, a bottler called Barrel, and it's a 14-year-old rye, and it's or a 14-year-old Canadian rye, and so I guess it's sourced from Alberta Premium. So I've had it. Well, shit. If it's as, if anything they make is as good as that one, I definitely got to get my hands on that again because that was a really good pour. Um, I think I still have a little bit of that left, to be honest with you. That's a fantastic dram, man, for sure. They have. Uh, I think they have a couple different releases of that if I'm not wrong, but uh, Buna. Cheers, Peter White. Thanks for thanks for connecting the dots for me on that one, brother. It sure is, Chris. First time uh, Alberta Premium Cast Strength Rye. They also had 20 year old at 42% said so Don Holland. Shit, that sounds nice. Man. So we are getting close to ready time. I'll, I'll drop the link in here in a few minutes. Um, but yeah, it's been fun chatting tonight, y'all. Uh, talked a little bit about Wee Beastie. You know, I'm going to shamelessly plug my channel. I have an uncorking review of the Wee Beastie, which is going to come up uh, post on Friday when all my reviews do. So you'll get to hear my what my initial thoughts were when I cracked this. Um, solid stuff. We killed some Johnny Walker. Glad everybody could stop in and join, man. I hope everybody's doing well. Oh, Mike's in the house. Mike, nice to see you, buddy. He says, what's up? How you doing, man? We're uh, we're about to, you know, we're getting close to finishing up happy hour, and then uh, I'll be heading over for my weekly Tuesday show with Talix the Whiskey Tech. I'll drop the link in here when it's ready. Um, you will, uh, you know, feel free to join us. Side Pocket 7's in the house saying Buna 12. Yeah, man, cheers. <laughs> I love me some Buna 12. This stuff is great. I, I've Bunahaven is one of the distilleries I've really, really got more fond of this year. Um, I just got a 10 year old Manzanilla cask, um, like a 200 mil bot or 200 centiliter bottle. No, 200 mils, 20 centiliter bottle. I don't know metric. I'm an American, uh, from a uh, hand filled from the distillery. Freaking fantastic, man. 
I wish more of the Bunahaven uh, wine finish releases were here in the U.S. They're hard to get. Good to see you, Mike. Cheers. Dude, once once again, great happy hour. Yeah, cheers, Daniel. Yeah, it's always fun, man. I've been doing this, I think it's been about a month now, month and a half. This has been fun. I love doing these uh, weekly happy hours with everybody, man. It's really great. Cool. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to drop the link here. Um, we're going to head over to Telex, the Whiskey Text channel, uh, where we're going to do our weekly show. So I'll leave this open for a couple minutes, man. Feel free to hop on that link. I'll be heading over there shortly to join him for our uh, our weekly chat, and uh, should be a lot of fun. So grab that link in the chat, and uh, like I said, he's he just finished reviewing a travel exclusive Lagavulin 10, and then we're going to be talking. Um, we're going to be talking about just Lagavulin in general. So should be a lot of fun, man. All right, you guys. I'm going to sign off here. We'll catch you next week for the happy hour, man. Slancha. Appreciate y'all.